Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number four of Hog Talk, the official podcast for the Rockford Ice Hogs. Excited to be bringing you Ice Hogs content all throughout the season. The boys had a big weekend last weekend here at home. A couple of wins, one against Iowa, one against Grand Rapids. We'll break those down for you. We'll also talk our way through uh, what's coming up this next week with the Manitoba Moose. The Ice Hogs on the road for their first Canadian trip of the season north of the border. Coming up later on our packed show here today, we have a talk with second-year Ice Hog, big defenseman Louis Crevier. We have a bold prediction. We have a what-if and a whole bunch more to get to as well. Before we get too much further in our show, though, we do want to issue our condolences to the family of Adam Johnson, as many of you may have seen by this point. Uh, we are saddened, along with the rest of the hockey world, to hear about the passing of Adam Johnson, a hockey player who was over in the Elite Ice Hockey League in the UK uh, and tragically passed away after an incident on the ice. So our, our thoughts and prayers and condolences are with the Johnson family, all of his, uh, his family and, and former teammates, uh, and everybody that he touched in the hockey world. He played a couple of NHL games, uh, as long with several in the AHL. He had spent time uh, with Wilkes-Barre Scranton, with Ontario, and with uh, Lehigh Valley as well. So he uh, will be missed by all and didn't want to go much further in the show without acknowledging his tragic passing uh, and giving our best wishes to his family. Uh, there's no real way to transition out of that, but as we move along in our show, we want to bring up last weekend for the Ice Hogs, where Rockford was dominant in a pair of victory. This has been the best that this team has looked all season, and I say all season, it's now five games, but we have seen the best version of Rockford that we have yet captured a glimpse of, and it came on Friday to start, in which they scored three goals in the first period against the Iowa Wild. Rockford was by far the better offensive team in the game, but what also stood out was how good Rockford was physically. We saw a number of hits doled out in that game by the Hogs, and Iowa was the more penalized team in the game, and if you were just looking at the box score, you might think that the Wild were the ones who were laying the hits, trying to rough up the Ice Hogs, but really, it felt like it was the other way around. The Ice Hogs were uh, great in on the forecheck, making things hard on a very young Iowa defense, and as was the result... The Wild were given a couple of misconduct penalties, and they were getting involved after the whistle uh, instead of throughout the uh, the course of play. So uh, Rockford with a 6-2 to win, their second win of the year, uh, and that was also their first home win here at the BMO Center. We saw Logan Nyhoff in the second period pick up his first AHL goal. He had played a little bit with San Diego last season. No goals with the goals, but he comes over here and picks up a tally with the Hogs. Really nice deflection in front of the net. And that Nyhoff goal kind of summed up the night for the Ice Hogs, where every line was contributing. The Hogs were getting to the danger areas and making the most of those plays in front of the net as well. Rockford also scored a couple of power play goals in that game to keep that power play red hot. They were two for three in that game. Jackson Stauber stopped 22 of 24 in his first win of the season. Didn't have a crazy busy night in, in between the pipes, Jackson Stauber. And he did give up one goal that we thought on the broadcast, myself and Steve Martinson, we thought it might have been goalie interference. Stephen Fogarty was parked uh, right in the blue paint. Looked like he might have prevented Stauber from kind of being able to extend that glove. But the goal stood, and it was all but academic because Rockford was well uh, on top by that point. I believe that was the first goal um, for Iowa when Rockford was already up 5 nothing at that point. So... Uh, pretty good night for, for Rockford. Uh, one little note I had written down on Nyhoff. He scored his first AHL goal on Friday against the, uh, against the Wild. Two years ago, he was the fourth leading scorer on the Regina Pats out in the WHL. Guess who was the leading scorer on that Regina Pats team two years ago? If you would have guessed a 16-year-old Connor Bedard, you would be correct. Uh, Nyhoff and Bedard were both on that WHL squad in Regina, and both were among their team leaders in scoring, now both uh, in the Blackhawks organization. Kind of funny how the world works like that. Then on Saturday, we really saw a continuation of what we had taken part in uh, in Friday's game. Really, the first period on Saturday felt like the fourth period from Friday because Rockford came out against Grand Rapids on Saturday with the exact same pace, the exact same urgency that we all saw in the first game of the weekend. The Ice Hogs poured in a couple of goals. Ethan Del Mastro got his first professional goal uh, with a, a nice rebound opportunity that came off of 
Anders Bjork's shot. And then uh, after that, we had a, a goal from uh, Joey Anderson later in the game, an empty netter by Anderson to uh, give him goals in four straight games. Brett Cini had the other tally for the Ice Hawks. But uh, Anderson now with a four-game goal streak. And funny enough, we're in our 25th season of Ice Hawks hockey, and the longest ever Ice Hawks goal streak, AHL or UHL, it's only five games. So Joey Anderson is on the cusp, potentially, of Rockford Ice Hogs history here. One more goal, and he would tie the uh, all-time franchise goal streak at five. Now, uh, obviously, he's got to pick that one up, uh, and we're hoping that he does. But uh, he could be in uh, some, some special spaces in our, our media book as we continue uh, along here in the first few weekends of the season. Should also note that David Gust assisted on that Joey Anderson goal on Saturday. So now David Gust has an assist in every game this season for the Ice Hogs. So he has picked up right where he left off last year. And it looks like that season a year ago in which he was an all-star, that's not, not just a blip on the radar for him. He is becoming an AHL stud uh, after what he did last year and now uh, carrying that into this year. And he has made the most of the opportunities that he's been given here in Rockford. Uh, Drew Camesso pitched a shutout on Saturday as well, and when he did so, and when he stopped all 18 against Grand Rapids, he saved or he became the youngest Ice Hogs goaltender to ever record a shutout uh, here in the state line. So pretty cool stuff from Drew Camesso, just 21 years old, already has a pro shutout under his belt in just three games of action, and, and much like Friday's game, Camesso didn't see a ton of rubber. He saved 18 shots. When I asked him after the game, what do you think your best shot of the night was? He didn't really think of one. He was more happy with his rebound control, and he wasn't tested all that much, but a shutout's a shutout, and uh, he looks good early on. So uh, it's been fun to watch him and uh, fun to watch, again, Del Mastro get his, uh, his first pro goal as well. With that uh, kind of weekend recap, let's take a look at some of our bold predictions and what-ifs from the last couple of weeks. Let's start with the bold predictions segment where we have everybody send in uh, any bold predictions or any, any guesses on things that might happen through the season uh, that you'd like to have addressed on the show. And we've had a, a boatload of them come in here these last few episodes, which has been awesome. There are some that we haven't gotten to that we will. But did want to mention a couple of weeks ago that Doug and Byron had predicted that the Ice Hogs would pick up double-digit wins against the Chicago Wolves this season. The two teams play each other 12 times. Well, and Chicago's already beat Rockford once. So the Ice Hogs have to now win 10 of the next 11 against Chicago for that bold prediction from Doug to come true. So uh, to Doug and Byron, your bold predictions in a little bit of hot water early on. But that's why it's a bold prediction, right? Uh, then last week, or last episode, I should say, Manny and Winnebago predicted that Drew Camesso would become the number one goaltender here in Rockford and would become an all-star in the AHL. Well, so far, Drew Camesso, through three starts, mind you, 202 goals against average, 928 save percentage. Those are all-star caliber numbers, Manny and Winnebago. And again, we're only three starts in, but at least your bold prediction doesn't look too foolish here to begin. We still have 36 games for the Ice Hogs until the all-star break in February. And if Camesso starts uh, 18 of those, that's a lot of hockey to be played between now and then. But uh, it is a good start for the young goaltender, Manny. So uh, we... We don't, we don't hate it if your bold prediction comes true. We'll, we know that we'll see plenty of Jackson Stauber here uh, in Rockford as well. But uh, this episode's bold prediction, our fourth of this young year, comes from Sandra in McChesney Park. So, Sandra, thank you for writing in. But Sandra's bold prediction no doubt came after October 27th when Colton Dock was sent to the Ice Hawks from the Blackhawks. But Sandra writes in that Colton Dock will be the most impressive rookie for the Ice Hogs this season. Again, Doc sent down, uh, I believe it was Friday of this past weekend, and he started the year up in Chicago, was a little bit banged up, so uh, he was getting some medical treatment up with the Blackhawks before coming down and, and taking the ice here at Rockford over these last couple days. Um, he still probably needs a few practices before we see him in game action, um, but uh, he is now clear to play. 
I noticed how, Sandra, you said most impressive and not leading scorer. So you're ob- obviously including uh, Colton Dock amongst the defensemen and amongst Camesso, the goaltender. Reminder, Ethan Del Mastro, Nolan Allen, come a couple of high-profile uh, prospects in this Blackhawks pipeline to keep an eye on. We have seen those two already, and they have been very impressive thus far. Del Mastro is running the top power play. And then, like we were saying earlier, Drew Camesso, his professional debut this season, a couple weeks ago in San Jose. This is his first pro year. He's looked very good as well. So for Colton Doc to be the most impressive out of all those, Sandra, that's, that's saying quite a bit, at least here early on. He plays hard, can score around the net, and here in Rockford would not be surprised if he gets to see a little bit of time on the power play unit, at least one of the two power play units where he's that net front presence. That's what we saw him operating as uh, at the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase when a number of the young Blackhawks prospects were in Minnesota uh, playing against the Blues and the Wild. So wouldn't be surprised if we see him get some power play time there. He is a hard line winger who plays a physical game. He's a leader in the room, very vocal on the ice as well. There were some battles between him and, and Nolan Allen when they were on opposite teams in the, the WHL. Uh, but him being the most impressive rookie, we'll have to see. Don't really have uh, much data on that yet as he hasn't played a single professional game. But uh, that's saying quite a bit, Sandra, considering that uh, he would have to surpass, quote-unquote surpass, uh, guys like Del Mastro and Camessa, who we've already seen uh, play at a high level through the first couple weekends of the year. So, Sandra, thank you for sending that in. That's our bold prediction here of Episode 4. Our what if of Episode 4 of Hog Talk comes to us from Richard and Roscoe. But before we get to uh, this week's bold prediction, or excuse me, what if, wanted to bring up uh, last episode's what if that came from Monique in Rockford. Monique had asked... What if Arvid Soderblom comes down to the Ice Hogs this year after starting the season with the Chicago Blackhawks? Well, Monique, let's get a quick update on how that is looking right now. Through three starts with the Blackhawks, Arvid has a 1-2-0 record. Uh, nothing to write home about there. But a 9-13 save percentage for Arvid Soderblom. Looking pretty good up there through a, granted, small sample size. But he has played against the likes of the defending Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knights. He has also faced a one of the Stanley Cup favorites for this year, actually two more of the Stanley Cup favorites for this year, Toronto Maple Leafs and Boston Bruins. So Arvid has a 913 save percentage. He's only allowed eight goals in those three games against three elite teams. And let me run down some of the names that Arvid has given up goals to so far this year. You probably know most of them if you follow the NHL. William Carlson and Jonathan Marcheseau, two Vegas Golden Knights. Mark Stone, three Golden Knights. John Tavares for Toronto. And David Pasternak for Boston. So you go down the list, and that is six uh, elite household names that uh, Arvid Soderblom has given up goals to, and again, the span of three games. So he's looking pretty good up there and doesn't feel like he'll be coming down to Rockford uh, anytime soon. At least that's what we hope. But in a similar vein to last episode's What If, Richard and Roscoe asks, what if Isaac Phillips stays in the NHL? Now, Isaac Phillips got called up to the National Hockey League just the other day, uh, this past uh, this past Sunday. Uh, that comes after Isaac Phillips uh, got a little bit banged up this past weekend. And so uh, now, excuse me, Alex Vlasic got banged up a little bit this past weekend. So now Phillips heads up with the big club, potentially with an opportunity uh, to play here over these next couple of weeks. Phillips has been up in the NHL each of the last two seasons. He played 16 games with the Blackhawks last year, three points in those games, had a very impressive goal against Seattle uh, in January last year for his first NHL goal. But what if Isaac Phillips stays up in the NHL this year? Well, Richard, we would be extremely happy for him. We might throw him a parade here in Rockford uh, because we know that he was the last cut here at camp this past past training camp for the Blackhawks. He was the last one to get sent down to the Ice Hogs. He was that close to making the opening night roster for Chicago. And so he he was disappointed to to be down here in Rockford. That doesn't mean that he wasn't he didn't have a good attitude about it uh, and that he didn't uh, he wasn't going to give it his all here with the Ice Hogs. We've certainly seen that from him uh, in the first 5 games of the year, but uh, he thought he had a good camp and thought he had a good chance of making the team 
He did have a good chance, but uh, he just ended up on the wrong side of that cut line. Now he gets a chance to go up and, and maybe make the most of this opportunity. And if he does stay, I think that says a lot about uh, his development these last few years in Rockford. This is now his fourth season with the Ice Hogs. Uh, and it also says a lot about the way that he has been able to defend. That's maybe, I don't want to say been the knock on him, but that's what these uh, what the Blackhawks want to see out of the young prospects. Take care of things in your own zone first. We know the skating ability that Isaac Phillips has. Here in the AHL, he can be a one-man breakout. Uh, he's amazing on the power play when he can gain you the offensive line and skate up the ice 200 feet. Uh, but now we need to see him become uh, a reliable defender at the NHL level as well. Uh, right now, if uh, Phillips were to stay up in the NHL, they'd have 8D up there once Vlasic comes back. Uh, and so, you know, how, how likely is that for the Blackhawks to carry 8D consistently? Kind of remains to be seen. A lot of teams don't do that. Maybe usually only have one extra D up there. Uh, but does that mean if Isaac Phillips stays up there, does that mean somebody comes down here to Rockford? Uh, Blackhawks and, and I think everybody who's been watching him so far are very high on Wyatt Kaiser, a young guy out of the collegiate ranks who – uh, had a really good training camp and uh, is very versatile on the back end. Uh, or a guy like Kevin Korczynski, a young guy coming out of juniors. Uh, we don't think he, we would see him necessarily, but uh, you never know. <laughs> this is just speculation at this point, and that's why it's the what if segment. But Richard, thank you for writing in uh, this episode's what if. What if Isaac Phillips stays up in the NHL? We hope that he does, by the way. It also, though, begs the question, what is the decor for Rockford? look like this season uh, we saw Isaac Phillips paired up with Philip Roos on that top D pair probably puts a little bit more pressure on uh, some of these rookie defensemen Ethan Del Mastro and and Nolan Allen and who's that next D who gets plugged into the lineup either Josh Maniscalco or Andrew Parrott those are the other two uh, defensemen who are on the Ice Hogs roster as well uh, Ross McDougal was called up from Indy uh, earlier this week uh, but it feels like Parrott and uh, uh, Parrott's and Maniscalco would be the next two uh, to, to fill that spot, so to speak. We've seen those two play more so at the, at the AHL level. So again, as always, uh, if you have bold predictions or what-ifs, please send them my way, and uh, we'll, try and get them, we'll try and get them on the show and address them because we do, uh, we do enjoy these segments. A lot of fun for us just to speculate wildly. But uh, let's get a look ahead for the Ice Hogs here. Rockford coming up is taking on the Manitoba Moose. It's the first of eight meetings on Saturday uh, in Winnipeg, and then they'll play again Sunday. Both games, 2 o'clock Central start times. By the way, kind of awkward timing there, but a couple of afternoon games in downtown Winnipeg. Uh, last season, the Ice Hogs could not beat Manitoba in regulation. Rockford did win four times, but those were all in uh, extra-time hockey. And so... The Moose picked up points in, in all four games against the Ice Hawks. Rockford trying to turn that around this season. Last year, we saw Manitoba as a really good defensive team. They really bottle up the middle of the ice and don't allow much transition um, throughout the center zone. So that's one thing to keep an eye on with a couple of games this weekend. Uh, just kind of a look at uh, some of the studs for Manitoba. Brad Lambert leads the team in scoring as we sit right now. Nine points. He was picked 30th overall. Uh, in not the 2023 draft, but the 2022 NHL draft. So a former first-round pick that's been lighting it up so far for the Moose. He looks like the real deal. And then Nikita Chabrikov will get uh, further clarification on these pronunciations. But uh, he's second on the club with eight points through the first handful of games for Manitoba. He was a second-rounder in 2021. So a couple of young guns for the Moose leading the way offensively right now. They still return guys like Jeff Malott, Dominic Toninato, uh, and Daniel Torgerson, all guys who were wildly effective uh, for this Manitoba team last season. They score a lot of net front goals, especially uh, Jeff Malott. He's going to be tough to move from the crease. So uh, they, they play a hard style to play against uh, Manitoba. and It'll be a great test for Rockford coming up this weekend. And if you've been paying attention to the Moose this year, you will have seen that their number one goalie right now is none other than former Ice Hog Colin Delia. The real deal uh, deals, he's uh, uh, in uh, Manitoba, in Winnipeg, after signing a one-year NHL deal with the, Winni uh, with the Winnipeg Jets. He was with the Ice Hogs for uh, five seasons before he was out west uh, last year in Abbotsford and uh, Vancouver. 
Likely uh, that the Ice Hogs will play against him at some point this weekend in one of the two games. This will be the first time that he is playing against the Ice Hogs in his career. So there's kind of a look ahead at Rockford's next couple of games this weekend against the Manitoba Moose. Reminder that after that weekend, we have the school day game coming up as well on Wednesday against the Texas Stars. That is November 8th uh, against Texas, a 1030 start time for that game. Uh, we have a lot of school children coming in. So if you're watching on AHL TV or listening on Mixler, the crowd noise might be a little bit higher pitched than normal uh, for that morning contest. Some AHL news as well, and we won't get too far into the, the news of the rest of the league, but uh, we know this Central Division is going to be extremely tight this year. The Central Division was the first division this year in the AHL in which every team had multiple regulation losses. Right now, everybody is within four points of each other in the Central. There's no other division that is tighter than that in the American Hockey League so far. Uh, the only team with one win is Chicago, and it came against Rockford uh, the other weekend here on opening night in the state line. So uh, pay attention to those standings. I know it's early in the year, and, and nobody's going to be out of any kind of race here uh, this early on before, uh, before Thanksgiving, before Christmas. But things are going to be tight. And remember that the Ice Hogs snuck into the postseason by just one point last year. So every point matters, even if that's picking a shootout win or, or, or turning a loss into an overtime loss. Those are crucial points that are going to matter once we uh, get down to brass tacks late in the season. But uh, with all of that under our belts, let's get to our interview. We had a great sit-down with defenseman Louis Crevier. Uh, he, has, uh, he had some great insight for us into kind of his upbringing. Uh, very personable and uh, just great to chat with him. So enjoy the interview with, uh, with Big Lou. And one quick note, we try to bring you the best production that we possibly can here on Hog Talk. But uh, we did have a little focus issue with our camera in this Crevier interview. So uh, forgive us if my face is a little bit out of focus if you're watching on YouTube. But don't worry, Crevier is mostly in focus. You want to watch him anyway. But uh, here's our interview with Big Lou. Welcome in to our interview with Ice Hogs defenseman Louis Crevier. Louis, thanks for joining us, first thanks. of all. This is our most elaborate uh, interview setup that we've had so far. So you're welcome for that. Don't it's mess this up. I feel welcome. <laughs> uh, year two for you, man. Uh, how do you feel kind of coming in to the start of the year? And uh, what are you most excited for? I mean, so far, so good. I think we have a, a nice group. Uh, personally, the training camp well went really well for me. And uh, I don't know, just like knowing the people here is, uh, I think it's a big difference for me. Like yeah. I have more confidence and just like, I'm just more relaxed uh, on the ice, off the ice. So yeah, it's just, I think a little bit more enjoyable for me. How important is it? And I don't think a lot of civilians, a lot of fans maybe understand this, but like how important is it to like know how to get around a city, know how to get to the rink and like know where to park, all that stuff that you don't know your first couple of weeks here. And now that you're a season in, that stuff's just automatic and you can just focus on the game. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a big difference. Actually, <laughs> like my first, um, last year, my first few weeks, I had my parents here for me. So they, they actually did, because it's, it's the first time we were in the, the U.S. for yeah. an extended period of time. But uh yeah, they just went all of ju just checked all the grocery store like which one would be good for me and stuff. So we, uh, yeah, they did all that for for me and knowing where to go, it's yeah. makes it really easy. Yeah, you find a basketball court here? What uh, do you like or? Nah, no, <laughs> it's just I found a couple of uh, tennis court though. I might, okay, I might try, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, well, um, last year was your rookie season. Obviously, you were consistently in the lineup with the Ice Hogs. Did you ever feel like there were any rookie moments that you had? I mean, maybe just like the, <laughs> actually, maybe just the the, the first game here. Uh, something that's different from juniors where I play is just like, I feel like the fans were kind of yelling a bit more, you know, really? the, the, hey, guess what, your goalie sucks. I thought, yeah. like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, um, they're trying to phase that out yeah, now, yeah. but uh, know. We'll, you kind of like it? Yeah, yeah, we like it. But uh, <laughs> People are just nicer in Quebec. No, it's it's just different. Like it's like chance like that. I kind of like that. Yeah. That was that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I think it's with a tra It's such a long training camp, so it was it was easy for me to go from like junior training camp and mm -hmm. then come back here. So we still had 
I think last year we had a like a week before the, the, the actual game started, so it was mm-hmm. just a, a long period of time. But for rookies, it's really good to yeah. get. As far as like the speed of the game and the physicality of the game and things like that, did you feel pretty much right at home? Uh, yeah, I mean there was a lot of adjustment for me. I think uh, I, I think the physical part I can handle well because mm-hmm. uh, you know I'm not the guy who's hitting the most, uh, but still like I can I'm not. You're not afraid. a stranger to it, yeah. Yeah, I'm not afraid of, like, a big guy coming at me yeah. or something. But, um, no, I think it was – I feel like the AHL compared to junior is more like a, pos- a possession game. So, still something I'm trying to work on. Maybe not yeah. rush the pass or anything. Um, I think that was the biggest difference uh, for me. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, coming here to Rockford and being able to play, like, not every game, but pretty consistently here for the Ice Hawks. Like, how big do you think that was for your development where, you know, you were, especially towards the end of the year, like, you know, one of the regulars in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, it was it was cool for my confidence. Yeah. Uh, I think I had a really strong start to the season. Um, and one thing I've learned uh, last year is that, you know, the beginning of the year and the end of the year is, is kind of where there's a lot of players, right? Like, sure. There's not many injuries, and up top they have a full lineup. Uh, in the yeah. AHL, we get a full lineup, so it's hard to make your your place if you're a new guy. Or even like this year, we have so many, like we yeah. kind of have a lot of people here. But um, yeah, it was good for my confidence to mm-hmm. you know play regularly, and uh, I think it helped me for the year. Well, coming into this year, we got to see you again at. Uh, the prospect showcase up in Minnesota, things like that, and they actually pinned the C on you for one of the games. Yeah. How uh, how cool was that? Yeah, it was cool. I I can't remember the last time I, I had a C on, but uh, you know I'm not the, the guy who's gonna talk much in the locker room or anything. Especially now with like a language barrier, it's still still a bit. Your weird. English is better than some of these guys. So these these North yeah, American well, or the yeah, uh, but it's a long stuff. conversation. <laughs> like it's I always felt like for a conversation. It's good, like it's easy, but yeah. when you just gotta say one thing, <laughs> that's where it's it's hard. But um, no, it was really cool, and uh, I don't know, I'm the last guy who had a C for the Blackhawks. So far, <laughs> yeah, so yeah the, that's the, you're exactly but, right. Uh, no, it was cool. It was it was a good experience. Yeah, well, was that uh, along with wearing the C? Like, was that week kind of an opportunity for you to be a bit of a leader with some of the the younger guys coming <clears> in? Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, as I said, I'm not like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell Connor Bedard sure. what, what to oh, do. No, right? yeah. Like, but, um, yeah, I think it was more like a, a leader on the ice, maybe, or just. Yeah. And for myself, I wanted to prove that I can be like, you know, take the next step. That's all. That's a big thing for me. Always trying to improve because, mm-hmm. say for especially for defense, it's I think it's a, maybe a longer journey to to get there sometimes. Right. And uh, for me, it's always about improving. I felt like during that week, I was. Mm-hmm. I, I proved that to the, the staff or whatever, So, yeah. and, but for myself, mostly. You talk about defensemen kind of taking longer to develop and, and, and work their way up a little bit. Like we saw that kind of with, with Alex Vlasic, where you know, he starts the year up in Chicago. He was in Rockford for, for most of, of last season. Um, you know, the, the Blackhawks seem to be very patient, especially with, um, you know, with their defensive prospects as well. So does that kind of encourage you a little bit knowing that like yeah like you know this is where I need to be to, to develop and, and get better right here and just focus on my craft more than anything yeah I mean <laughs> Vlas is a really good player that's yeah. why he's, he's there right now it was uh, actually got some some good games playing with him um, it's such a easy game when you have Alex with you but um, yeah, yeah at, at, but at the same time like we, we all have a, a different journey uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it's uh, it's good to like like I'm I, I don't have the, the yeah. same journey as as Vlas or any of those guys. So it's just like maybe focus on on you mostly. But uh, yeah, at the same time, it's a, when when you look around, it's it's good to see that developing is the you're developing well here. Well, and uh, you know, coming back to the preseason as well, you're playing in some Blackhawks preseason games and uh, scored a goal in one of them too. No Sally, I know you guys were down like 5 nothing, right? Was that kind of a bummer? I'm just <laughs> used to scoring. <laughs> yeah. no, no, it was good. That was good. A good feeling. It was, uh, it was a nice play. And it's just I got, I got two in the like, 
preseason with yeah. the, the, the rookie showcase. So I don't want yeah, to use them use all up the, early. Yeah, yeah, right. But no, I think it's uh, it's it's good to like <laughs> with last year. I had so many chances of scoring. Didn't you hit a lot of pipes too? Yeah, it was just. Uh, it was it was hard because I in juniors I like I I know I'm not a goal scorer like I'm not it's not gonna be my job if mm-hmm. I'm, I make it anywhere but still like I feel I have a good shot so not not seeing the puck enter the the goal was kind of hard at times especially on the longer season but yeah even though it's preseason for me it was it was good because I just a little reminder hey mm-hmm. you can you can shoot the puck you can yeah. get it there so. It's like basketball, right? Like you just need to see it go through the hoop, right? right. No, it's no, but it's actually it's 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 big for for playing and stuff like that. So it, no, it felt good, and especially like I don't know, and, and they it's still yeah. preseason. It's still like an initial type of game. So yeah, it was pretty cool. You have a celly kind of no, picked I've out never, yet? Or? No, I've never had this. Really? No. You're not gonna give us like a patty cane, you nah, know? It's just drop to a knee. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna raise my stick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll yeah, take that. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, going back to uh, your path coming up through junior, you played with uh, uh, played under Patrick Wah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how cool was that? Getting to to you know, be with the legend every day in practice and things like that. Yeah, I remember when I was playing against like his team I was still like oh it's still Patrick. It's, yeah. it's cool, but he he was such a good coach. Like he. At first, maybe the first few few weeks, you see him as oh, the, the, the goaltender, right, the, the the legend. But after a couple of practice, everything like that, you just see him as your coach, right? And he was, you know, one thing that kind of impressed me is uh, he was even though he was a a hockey player and then he had a great career as a coach and he's still I think he's, he's not done, but. Um, like he was always willing to uh, to learn. Like he was he was not like let's say he was doing a breakout exit or whatever it was. He was just like because he was always asking for hard thoughts, uh, hard thoughts. So it was uh, it was it was good to yeah. It was really cool to 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 play under him. Did you ever give Patrick Wah any feedback on the breakout? Like hey hey coach, let's do this instead. <laughs> no, but it's still it's still good. Well, I say no, but maybe like. A couple of times that happened. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember. But yeah, it's just him. Like, hey, is that good with you guys? That was. I think that was yeah. pretty pretty nice of him. Yeah, I, I mean, like you know, some of the guys in there, are, you know, sixteen, seventeen years old, right? And, and getting mm-hmm. to learn from him, like, like that's got to be an amazing experience. Did he ever lace him up and uh, and get in net against you guys or no? I don't. I don't think he did. No, oh. that would have been sick. That would have been sick. But uh, no, just. Uh, no, I don't. I don't remember that. I can't, can't tell a good story for, for for him listing him up. But no, it was just great coach. Well, speaking of juniors, one guy that you used to play with that we're probably going to see here in a couple weeks. Uh, can you help me with his lat with his name? Is it Artemi Knaisev? That uh, uh, yeah, Nyatsev. Yeah, Nyas. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, but you were a D partner with him. Is yeah, that right? for two years. Okay. Yeah, with him. Yeah. Yeah, he's in uh, Manitoba, right? Yeah, yeah, he's he's in the Jets organization. So yeah. are you kind of chopping at the bit to go against him a little bit? <laughs> I'm not, I've, I've, uh, actually, I haven't talked to him in a while, but he was a like, good, really good uh, player. He was, uh, especially on the big ice in Shikurimi, that, that was where we played together. Mm-hmm. It was just, uh, you know, he was such a good skater, so it was just a uh, question for me to get him the puck on the breakout and let Artemi do his thing. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think he got a... One game in with uh, yeah. the Sharks, uh, I think last year, but uh, now it's going to be fun to 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 play against him again. Yeah. Yeah. W- what was playing in the queue like for you? I mean, obviously your your home province league, right? Like, mm-hmm. what well, what did you feel about the league and and, uh, and being able to play at, at at home, so to speak? Or how how close were you to home? I mean, uh, Shikurimi is. I'm from Quebec City, so Shikurimi was uh, only like two hours away from home, so it was just like a nice. Quiet ride in, yeah. in the mountains and stuff, so it was always nice to 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 go through that. But then after I played with the Rampart, so it was home. I was right there at home actually, no Billy's family, so it was uh, no great experience. Um, as I said in Shikurimi, I, I got to play on the big ice. Yeah. So I I think that's a great thing for development. So I, maybe just uh, you know down the road, who knows mm-hmm. if I'm gonna you know play on the yeah. European ice again and but. 
it's it's uh, tools that you, get, you put on your toolbox. Right. I was really good. I got to play for two great coach um, who had completely different vision of the game. But it's you know it's again it's tools that you can put in your yeah. arsenal. But yeah. having two having coaches with different styles did that kind of help you learn how to communicate with with coaches different or or what was the biggest benefit to having the, kind of the the two different coaching styles in your room? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just like you 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 want to expand your game, right? So if if you always, I think it's good to have the same coach, like not a uh, a change of coach every year and like twice a year and stuff like that. But if you can learn a little bit from one coach, even though like let's say I don't, I've, I think I've always uh, got along well with my coaches, but. Mm -hmm. Let's say even even though you don't you don't like your coach, your coach sometimes it happens but I think you can still like learn a little bit from you him. still respect him right yeah yeah learn learn from for from every like game plan or whatever so it was and Yannick Jean be, uh, my, being my coach in Chicago and Patrick in um, Quebec as I said two different so it was <laughs> really 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 cool yeah. Well, obviously I mean maybe not obviously since we're sitting down here but you are six eight I'm not. Do you find that when you're out there defending guys, are they ever surprised at uh, like maybe thinking that you don't have the gap on them or thinking they have more room to work with and then you're able to just kind of poke it away? Um, I don't. Well, I don't know if surprise is the right word uh, in our division because we played them 12 times <laughs> yeah. every, okay. every yeah. year. So I don't know after one game if there's like there's a surprise, but. Um, no, I think well. That's one thing I, I learned with the ninety here. You want to like, let's say again in Shikuri me, I was told to always like being full extent, uh, full extension, stick on puck all the time. But then here ninety, he's more like don't don't let him see your reach, right? Just give yourself a little a little something to surprise them. Okay. Uh, so, um, the game within the game a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Um, yeah, stuff like that is just, I don't know if they're, they're surprised of my reach or anything, but I'd like to, to think I'm a good place instead of them being surprised. Right. But, um, yeah. What's it been like working with Nighty, uh, especially now that, you know, there's some continuity with the coaching staff coming into mm -hmm. this season and, and the guy that mans the defense, this is, you know, your second year kind of learning from him. Yeah, he's been a good coach. I think he, uh, actually when he played, he was more of a, you know, defensive-minded defenseman, so it's... He's a player's coach. He knows how to, you know, how to play. He's been right. a good player, so it's, uh, yeah. The thing I think he changed a lot for me is my posture on the ice. Let's say I maybe in juniors I was leaning a little bit more. I was, you know, doing some all gill on the, on the, you know, <laughs> the going down. I, I still do it sometimes, but I'd say he wants me to be more up and stand tall and uh, have two hands on my stick and be more like a. Is that so you can change directions easier? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Just not, you know, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but it's mm -hmm. just, um, yeah, it's been, and I think it's been for the better, yeah, for the better for me, but um, yeah, let's say the posture he changed. Yeah. He said, no, no, not happening this year. That's that's interesting. That's interesting. So that was something last year that's carried into this year then, or? Yeah, but it's it's still something I got to work on. Like, yeah. it's still like little reminders because it's tough to break a habit that you right. had for four years, right? But, um, no, I think it's been a good change for my, my playing stuff. And one thing that stands out about you as well is that you move really well for somebody of your size. Not a lot of 68 guys can, can skate you know, the way that you do. How much was that an emphasis for you kind of in those developmental years in juniors um, that led to you eventually getting drafted by the Blackhawks? And, and then how much is that an emphasis for you right now? It's always something you work on. I'd say, I'd say the big guys and she couldn't me because it's so so big. You gotta you gotta skate. Well, I think that helped me quite a bit, to be honest. Okay. But um, yeah, I never grew like six inches in a summer. I was always like you were never too big for yourself. Yeah, it was always like gradual. So I've never like you know had one one summer. I was like, all right, I'm I'm like a Bambi. I, I don't know how to skate anymore. So it was yeah. I think that that was good for my development, just being able to to have the same. Uh, skating uh, yeah 
every time, yeah, every year. I know uh, to start this year, there's only been a couple games over the span of a few weeks, right? So you guys have had a lot more practice time. Have you, uh, or what are you working on when we have these development days when we've got some extra staff there out there on the ice to, to work on little things with you guys? I'd say, uh, yeah, like right now for me, I'd, I'd say they, they want, uh, well, they want and I want to add a little bit more of uh, deception in my game, maybe not, you know, not let the other team that I'm going to pass there and maybe uh, and just okay. do a little pass in the middle. So that's something we work on. And that's it's I think those are good days for making like errors and trying stuff. Right. Right. Um, no, it's good. And I mean, we're hockey players like we don't. Mm -hmm. That's our, our job anyway. So it's it's cool to be there for a longer period of time to workshop a little bit. Yeah, yeah. right. Because there's I mean, after after the practice, you don't you know you're coming back uh, to your place, and you I mean we have still stuff to do, but yeah, mainly like we're here for hockey, so it's good yeah. to to expand our games. What what do you do when you head back to your place and on a day like today, you got the rest of the afternoon to kick it? Yeah, uh, uh, this year I got uh, my dog with me, so I, a lot of. Uh, a lot of walks. I okay. think those, this is, you know, I, I've never come back from a walk and said, ah, I should have, I should not <laughs> go there. Right? It's, what it's, what it's, dog do you have? It's uh, Springer Spaniel. It's uh, the English type. Uh, is that a little guy or? It's like medium size. Okay. He had a lot of energy. It's good. He's like one and a half. So it's, uh, oh, man. Nah, it's good to, to have him here. It's, you know, good day, bad day. Always happy to see you. Do you have him pretty well trained or no? I'd say he's, he's one and a well, half, like that's old enough, right? Or yeah, no, like, I'd say it's, he's he's well behaved. I gotta give credit to my girlfriend for that. I didn't do oh, much. Oh come there. on! <laughs> um, no, I'd, th I'd say he's well behaved. Yeah. Okay, but you're not like a video game guy or or anything like that, or uh, maybe sometimes, but okay. not not really. I just uh, yeah, hang up with the dog. Yeah, I love to cook, love to read. It's just I'm kind of a boring person to be honest. <laughs> but I like it this way. Well, one thing. As I was kind of going back through some of the interviews that you've done, um, you, you had always said, you know, you l enjoyed the Blackhawks growing up. You were a Blackhawks mm -hmm. fan, things like that. And I, I thought you were just kind of maybe pandering to... I was a bit of a bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. it was, you know, like the Kings and the Blackhawks were like... While well, they were winning their cups. Yeah, and I was just, all right, I'm going to pick one of those teams. And, but so it's, you, it's, you weren't a Habs fan? No, I'm from Quebec City. You, know, you hate the Habs, right? I, we don't hate the Habs. But it was always a little something. Yeah. I'd say because of my uncles, they were mostly like Nordiques then. Uh, right. Back in the day, right. But, um, no, we don't. It's, it's always the game that's on, right? Back home. So yeah. I've watched a lot of half spend still. It's, well, I always thought that you were just pandering to the Chicago audience, you know, after they had drafted you and things like that. But I, I saw you gave a lot of those interviews before you were drafted. So, so you truly yeah. did. Like, you were watching the Kings, you were watching the Hawks. And so. Yeah, well, that's that was like, that was a fun time for hockey, right? Oh, just yeah. like the. Like to some great teams, right. um, it was just a couple of early memories of me watching hockey and uh, enjoying watching it too. Just like kind of seeing if it's too late to watch the game, and if, <laughs> oh, you gotta go. No, it's like overtime or something. You know, it's it was uh, no, it was great hockey to watch, and I kind of I remember liking the, the 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 goal song. You know the. I don't know how they call it. Uh, uh, the Chelsea Dagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember liking that. And that just like, like best of course, the, the jersey is just unbelievable. Iconic. Best in, not only in the hockey, but like in sports in general. It's yeah. just great, 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 great jersey. So it's, uh, no, it's cool. Well, with you a lot of times on the ice, people, it's easy for people to make, you know, the, the Chara comparison, right? Just because you're two tall guys. But like, who, who did you look up to uh, when you were playing? Younger, I looked up to all Gill. Really? Yeah. Okay. I got go. Um, when we were, I think I was in Bantam, they uh, we had like a gift exchange, and um, everybody was like comparing us to a, a certain player. To like, all right, this guy is, makes me think of Crosby and all those guys. And the guy who got me a gift was said I look like all Gill, and everybody knew who I was then. So it was just, I don't know, a little bit comparison to all Gil on the ice. Like, as I said, I was yeah. always on, on the ice, like laying low, trying to block shots and stuff. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it's, it's got, you got a good, good. That's career. not a bad like, comparison. No one, <laughs> no one can say that they want, they don't want to be, they don't want to have an all Gil yeah. uh, career, right? 
think a thousand games in the Stanley Cup. But just uh, after that, I kind of look more into watching watching games and I like the the, the Cernak, Berico, and all all those those guys. Of course, Shara, but mm-hmm. it's a bit too obvious to say Shara when you're yeah. tall. But, um, no, it's it's cool to see the big guys move, how they move well, how they play with the puck. Right. Um, yeah, just lots lots of good defensemen out there. Yeah. Do you you probably know this, but uh, your pick was originally it originally belonged to the Canadians mm-hmm. and it got traded to the Blackhawks. So mm-hmm. would you have broken your uncle's heart if you ended up with, with <laughs> Montreal? <laughs> no, I think uh, he's like never know. coming to games. Or <laughs> no, I think yeah, uh, I think it was still you know it's still the Montreal Canadiens. It's yeah. sick, but um, yeah, I remember it, it being like a little bit of buzz around it actually because they they kind of like a Quebec guy and. Stuff like that is always like they want to they want to should draft and then they just change the pick and then Chicago like a U.S. team like draft me so it was I remember it's like seeing some funny funny stuff on on Twitter and stuff like that but yeah. um, no I'm happy where where I landed. Well, we play in the Central Division, but last year we got to take the Canadian trip up mm-hmm. north. I mean, how cool is that for? For not just you, but but like some of the other Canadian players too, who don't always, you know, get to have their families out to games and, and, and things like that. Yeah, it was really cool, like playing in Toronto, at first. Uh, yeah, it was Toronto, just like we and we were there for a couple of days too. Yeah, it was cool. Um, and then you know it was actually it was a pretty, pretty weird. Um, two games actually because there was like a snowstorm yeah like in Canada a little snowstorm we almost got uh, stuck in Belleville yeah yeah and uh, like we went straight to the game to Laval after and then I was so nervous for that game because uh, I had a lot of people coming yeah. in how many tickets I think you said like 30 the night of yeah or something, something right? like that. but it's kind of I think it's kind of normal it's not too excessive like all yeah. your family is going to be there and I, I saw a couple of like Rampart jersey with, uh, with oh it was, awesome. it was cool it was cool and it was crazy game too like yeah. remember big mo scoring the goal in the uh, <laughs> shootout and it was just like a tight game yeah uh, them scoring with like 20 seconds left or something mm-hmm. that was a really cool game but then you know seeing fa- the family after it just it was incredible yeah well, how many more rounds would it have gone before before you came up because we, we had made it pretty far down the list <laughs> i like to say i, I, I like to say that the backup home. goalie would have would have been before me <laughs> But the e-bug, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I was, I was, I was kind of, was getting nervous. But it, yeah. it was the second time that it happened that year because right. we, we had one here. We had a fifteen rounder here. Yeah, against Milwaukee. Yeah, and then that one was like what thirteen or something. It was uh, like, yeah, it was. I want to say twelve or eleven, yeah. twelve or thirteen, somewhere in there. Crazy game. Like, yeah. It's kind of cool. It's, it's Were you, do you start thinking of a move at that point? Like, I'm just going to skate down and fire slap her. Yeah, or that, was, that would have been, honestly, <laughs> that would have been my move. Uh, it's just not too many. Yeah. It's a uh, stick end a little bit. <laughs> well, and we were pretty banged up at that point in the year, yeah. too. Like, a lot of injuries. Guys have been called up. Some PTO guys were in there. We had two defensemen playing yeah. forward that game. Yeah. Was that an option for you? Were, were they were about to throw you up, up, up front or no? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I like playing defense. It's, yeah, it's, it's the best but position. but that's kind of the way it was, right? And it was yeah. a long, it wasn't a long road trip, but it was difficult. You mentioned with the travel and things yeah. like that, and uh, yeah, that was a pretty crazy ending. And you're playing in front of a, a sold out ten thousand seat yeah. arena. Yeah, well, I'd say like the the last game helped me, even though I was nervous. Like it was just extra motivation playing for you, mm. like in front of your family. So you weren't tired or anything, or I mean, what, once. It's always before the game, right? Like yeah. before the game, the meetings and stuff. Maybe you're just anxious, but once you put your skate on, yes, yeah, yeah, everything goes away suddenly. So it's always like that, and it was, yeah, I think it helped me quite a bit there. How special was it uh, just playing that atmosphere too? Because they put on a show yeah. in Laval. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's tough to beat, right? It's especially and after that, I saw like in the playoff and. Uh, it was always like back. I think for the when they were doing that playoff push, um, it was always sold out. And mm-hmm. being from there, at, on like I don't know, just on on the social media, you see stuff yeah. from from them quite a bit. So it was it was yeah, it was pretty cool. There it, it felt like a, a little bit ex- not extra, but uh, 
you know, not something you usually see maybe in the AHL. It was like yeah. a little, little something more there. Yeah. I don't know if it, if it, it was because I'm from there. I'm not from Laval, but so. Yeah. But it just felt a little bit something there. Yes. Yeah. No, it was it was a special night. Yeah. It was, but and I was glad a glad a French boy got the goal too. One of our yeah. French guys, right? Yeah. No, I was happy for Mo. Yeah. Was sick. No, that, that was that was great. Well, Louis, this has been uh, this has been great. Thanks, man, for doing this. I saw you would uh, I think scrolling through your Instagram going way back. Saw you in a Duke jersey. Are you a Duke fan? Of uh, in college basketball, or was that just that know, was just I had my thing. basketball face back then with the okay. shoes and jersey. So not anymore. I'm into tennis now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. change. No, I'm still I still like basketball. Yeah? yeah. Can you shoot, or are you just a post player? Um, let's say I can win a one on one with everyone here easily. Really? But I'm not a shooter. Okay. Yeah, that's a big mo. Actually, I, he no said kidding. he was gonna be, beat me, but it didn't happen. So you you're not gonna stretch the floor on us or anything like no, that. Just, Go to the go to the rim. Okay. Go to the rim. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll we'll have to see. We'll get yeah. you some some one on ones with with Nighty or something, or, or get you win. in Philly. Easy <laughs> win. Really? Come on, some athletes. No, um, Louis, we appreciate it, man. We look forward to seeing you out there uh, the rest of the year. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. He is so personable, isn't he? We hope that uh, we can either get him back on this programming on Hog Talk or some other interviews throughout the season because Louis always gives us great sound bites. But it was great to talk with him. And uh, we're excited to see him continue to develop in his second season as a pro. Another reminder that the next home game is coming up on November 8th. That's a Wednesday school day game. Uh, so we'll be starting that game in the morning against the Texas Stars. The next weekend game is Friday, November 10th against the Iowa Wild. Uh, that is salute to aerospace night as well with aviator style sunglasses. That's a giveaway in effect for the first te- first 1500 fans. Uh, it's presented by Collins Aerospace with uh, 13 WREX as our media partner there. I am very fired up uh, for that giveaway because I am a big aviator guy, um, big Top Gun guy. So it all kind of fits in. Uh, another home game to look out for is, is Friday, November 17th against Milwaukee. The Admirals come into the BMO Center. And uh, for that game, we have a refillable tumbler giveaway. I actually have one of these tumblers, and it is wonderful. But the first 1,500 fans will uh, receive a free refillable tumbler. Uh, that's presented by Pepsi and by Beefaroo. So uh, those are some of the upcoming home games for the Ice Hogs. But Rockford has two dates with the Manitoba Moose coming up this weekend. Be sure to tune in on AHL TV, Mixler, and 19.2 as well. We appreciate you for tuning in to Hog Talk episode four. Reminder to send in any questions, any bold predictions, or any what ifs. If you're watching on YouTube, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, Subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And uh, don't be afraid to like the video and tell a friend as well. If you're listening on podcast, uh, we appreciate you rating the podcast and writing a review and telling us all the things that we're doing right as well and don't be afraid to throw in some constructive criticism but uh, we'll see you next time on the next episode of hawk talk